So smartphone brand Vivo has finally come to the UK and its first official UK launch is this bad boy here, the Vivo X51 5G. Now if you've not heard of Vivo before, they are well worth paying attention to because they really like to innovate. For instance, they were the first manufacturer to showcase a smartphone with a built-in in-display fingerprint sensor. And with the X51 5G, that innovation rests in the camera system, notably the gimbal-style stabilization setup, which is actually pretty similar to what Apple announced for the iPhone 12. As for the UK pricing and release date, well, the Vivo X51 5G will hit Blighty on October the 29th for the price of 749 quid. But that's more than enough waffle. Let's actually whip the Vivo X51 5G out of its box, take a full on tour of that hardware and software, and of course, those camera smarts. And for more than the latest, greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Okay, there's the phone. Let's see what else you get packed in here. You've got all the setup guide, warranty info, etc., and a pokey pin to get your SIM in there. You've got your prophylactic case to slap on there and just keep the X51 all safe and sound. We've got a two pin Vivo Flash Charge 2.0 adapter. Hopefully, it'll be a three pin if you buy it in the UK. You always have the Type C USB cable. You've also got a pair of silicone tip earphones in there as well with a 3.5mm connection and spare earbuds for said earphones. However, because there's no 3.5mm headphone jack, on the Vivo X51 Pro, you do actually get a bundled 3.5mm to Type-C USB adapter bundled in the box too. And that is that in a neat and tidy little package. Now, first impressions are definitely that this is a premium phone through and through, as you would kind of hope for that £749 price point. It's a surprisingly skinny smartphone, just over 8mm in total and 181 grams, so it's got a nice bit of heft to it, but it's not overly weighty. You've got a glass front and back here, but while most rival manufacturers go for Gorilla Glass, what you've got here is the shot X Sensation Up, very funky title. It's a German rival basically to Gorilla Glass. It's supposed to be just as tough. I haven't reviewed a shot phone in quite some time, so I'll definitely be uh, putting it through its paces. And sadly, you don't have a choice of different colors with the Vivo X51. It's only available in this uh, rather snazzy alpha gray finish. It's a really smart looking back end though, and it's got the same frosted finish as the likes of the OnePlus 8T. It's got a nice soft touch sort of feel to it. Uh, it's definitely very stunning. And so far, it seems to be just as good at resistant fingerprints as the OnePlus 8T as well. So hopefully you won't need to uh, be constantly buffing it on your pants. And there, of course, is the quad lens camera tech, which is the real reason to really go for the Vivo X51 5G over rivals. And thankfully, it doesn't jut too far from that surface, despite the fact that it's supposed to have quite incredible next level stabilization involved. And so hopefully we'll have some gas in the tank and then we can get the X51 5G all set up and ready for action. And when you're sticking your SIM in there, there's actually space for two SIM cards at the same time. It's one of these reversible trays, uh, but unfortunately no room for a micro SD memory card to expand the 256 gigs of onboard storage. And in case you're dying to know as well, by the way, the storage is UFS 2.1 on here. Sadly, not the fresh 3.0 or 3.1 that you get on some flagship phones like the OnePlus 8T. Apologies to anyone who's not into the geeky details, uh, but what you get here on the Vivo X51 5G is a fairly stock looking version of Android. It's Android 10 sadly, not the freshest new Android 11. And like stock Android, there is of course limited customization. You can chuck on your own wallpaper, play around with widgets, dive into the home settings. You've got a couple of options in there and that's it. However, if you dive on into the settings on the Vivo X51, you will find some changes and that's because it's using the Fun Touch UI. And no, I shit you not, it is called Fun Touch. I didn't just make that up. But of course I am extremely mature, so I'm 100% certainly not going to make any rude jokes about that. <clears throat> but certainly anyone who likes those stock Android vibes should uh, enjoy a bit of fun touch because, you know, to be fair, it's got all of the features that you would expect. You've got your dark mode on there. You've got your gesture navigation. You've got the likes of the, uh, the digital well-being features. And then on top of that, you've got a few bonus bits as well. So for instance, in the settings, you'll find the ultra game mode. And this gives you some pretty cool features. So for instance, you've got the eSports mode, which is basically a typical performance boost just to dedicate all of the resources to the game. And you've also got off-screen autoplay, which is something I haven't seen on other smartphones. This basically allows the game to continue running in the background even when the display is switched off. So that could be incredibly handy for any games where you need to uh, leave the game running to build up resources but without absolutely caning your phone's battery. I remember back in the day I used to leave SimCity running overnight uh, while I slept and when I got up I'd have a shit ton of money and I could just build whatever I wanted. Either that or half of the city would just be on fire. And of course as usual you can block notifications or like good stuff. And while you're actually playing a game as well you can pull out a dinky wee 
window just to access a couple of the most useful features like blocking the notifications and getting that off-screen autoplay feature on the go too. You've also got an always on display because it is an AMOLED screen and you've got a small selection that you can choose between there. And as you can see right there, the Vivo X51 5G also of course sports an in-display fingerprint sensor. Thankfully seems nice and nippy and you can even change up the icon animation for that as well so you can get a few different uh, funky effects on the go. Or if you'd rather use a bit of face recognition, well you got that as well. Just tap that power button and boom, straight in. Now the screen here is a 6.56 inch AMOLED display and as you can see there are very skinny bezels surrounding it and the screen does actually curve ever so slightly around the edge of the device as well. Thankfully, touch word, no issues with uh, you know palm fat strain onto that screen and accidentally pressing stuff uh, on your behalf. It's a full HD plus resolution, not quad HD plus like some rivals around this price point, but honestly, you have to put this side by side with a quad HD smartphone to really notice the difference. You still get plenty of fine detail packed in there. Images look nice and crisp and nice and colorful too. You do have HDR10 plus support. Sadly, there's no support for HDR streaming on Netflix at the time that I shot this video but hopefully that'll be coming soon and of course you can dive on into the display settings and have a play around with the color output if you like as well as you can see it's set to standard uh, which is not very descriptive at all you can also put it on normal which is surely the same as standard you would have thought but never mind uh, or bright and you can also have a play around with the color temperature yourself too and like every other flagship smartphone out there um, well apart from the iPhone 12s obviously uh, you got support for 90 Hertz refresh on here as well you can bump it up to 90 Hertz full time otherwise you can leave the Vivo X51 5G to do smart switch in between 60 and 90 to just preserve battery life where it's not necessary. As for the audio, well, as I mentioned before, there is no built-in headphone jack, unfortunately, on the Vivo X51 5G. What you do have is a mono speaker setup as well as no stereo output on here. But let's just boost up the volume, see how good it is. Export camera tech, you've got the brilliant gaming features. So yes, you can't call the Sony Xperia smartphone affordable, although they do do mid-range to low-end stuff if you want them. It's not bad at all, to be fair, as long as you don't accidentally muffle the speaker or anything it's uh, certainly nice and loud nice and punchy a decent sounding uh, audio right there but of course if you want to enjoy a nice bit of music or something like that you're not going to be wanting to use that speaker you're going to want to connect via bluetooth and you do have a uh, spot for high res audio on here a bit of hi-fi action and you can also customize the headphone output uh, based on your age as well unfortunately you can't uh, customize it based on how many stupid raves you attended when you were young and dumb now let's have a gander at the performance and the vivo x51 5g doesn't use the top end qualcomm snapdragon 865 chipset that a lot of other flagship phones do. It's gone the Google Pixel 5 route instead. What you get on here is the Snapdragon 7 6 5G. Fee not though, it might not be the top end premium performance that uh, you might hope and expect at this sort of price point, but it's still a very capable chipset. The likes of the Pixel 5, the OnePlus Nord, all those other smartphones that use the 7 6 5G, I found that you can do anything with these things. You can split screen multitask, you can play the likes of Call of Duty on top detail settings, no problems whatsoever. And you've got 8 gigs of RAM packed on here as well, so it should be nice and smooth for whatever you fancy. And of course, one of the benefits of the 76 5G is it does have built-in 5G support as well. So yes, the Vivo X51 5G is unsurprisingly 5G-ified. Now you get a 4,315 milliamp battery stuffed in here as well. So hopefully that should see you through a full day of pretty intensive use. Certainly that 76 5G chipset is very energy efficient. So you'll have to be absolutely hammering the Vivo X51 5G with a lot of camera use or something in order to drain it. And you got support for 33 watt flash charge, 2.0 charge in here as well. So hopefully should power up in about an hour or so on charge. Again, not as fast as some rivals like the OnePlus 8T with this new 65 watt uh, warp charge, but it's certainly a match for the likes of the Pixels, the iPhones of the world, stuff like that. And now, of course, the main event, let's finish up with a squint at that camera tech. As you can see, it's certainly a very busy camera interface, lots of different features and toggles to play around with. Um, so far, touch words, the camera seems nice and nippy, the shutter speed's very fast, fast to focus as well, so Chuck your hand in there, and as you can see, instantly differentiates between near and far focus. That primary sensor, it's a 48 megapixel Sony IMX598 sensor, and uh, so far seems to produce nice natural looking photos. Those colors certainly are accurately reproduced. And even though it's quite testing conditions here in the studio, it's uh, got good HDR smarts, and as you can see, a good bit of background information in there without overblowing the subject. And you've got a variety of other camera lenses on here as well. You've got a 13 megapixel 50 millimeter portrait camera. You've got an eight megapixel super wide angle camera, which you can flick to a like so. And then last up, you've got an eight megapixel telephoto lens with a five times optical zoom, as you can see there. And with that telephoto lens, you've got five times optical zoom, but you can also get up to 60 times hybrid zoom or hyper zoom, as Vivo likes to call it. And uh, as you can see here, when you zoom in to the sort of 10 times marks, everything's nice and sharp still, 30 times, 
Again, very, very crisp. Starts to get a little bit sort of grainy at the 60 times mark, but still very impressive. Now the killer feature here on the Vivo X51 5G and the feature that they hope will help differentiate it from rivals is the camera stabilization. Because this is the first Vivo smartphone to come with what they term an integrated gimbal. This can apparently offer three times the stability of just your standard conventional smartphone camera setup with optical image stabilization. Basically that primary lens is free to rotate every which way within its housing. This can help to counter any annoying little hand tremors or anything else that might give you a blurry shot or some really awkward awkward shaky video footage. Of course the true test of this feature is going to be the night mode because uh, that basically captures a long exposure shot and if there's even the slightest bit of hand tremor during that shooting process usually you end up with a really blurry ugly shot but hopefully this gimbal style setup will help to prevent that shake and give you a really nice crisp detailed bright looking snap. And you've got a couple more camera modes stuffed away inside the X51 5G to make use of that gimbal style stabilization such as the super moon for instance because of course everyone loves a good old moon shot on Facebook these days. And along a similar lines, you've also got the Astro mode as well, that just obviously helps you to capture a good starry night uh, sky. And this can apparently even remove that annoying little trail effect that you get from the really long exposure shots just caused by the Earth's rotation. So that's a nice little feature. And you also have the Pro Sports mode as well, which allows you to capture a video uh, while jumping about the place and uh, ducking and dodging and doing all kinds of stuff. Kind of similar to the Action Cam uh, mode that you get in a lot of other smartphones, except hopefully it should be even better here. And of course you can capture uh, portrait shots if you like as well just to get that nice bokeh style effect in the background and you can actually tweak the bokeh effect and uh, the strength of it as well and if you want to shoot a bit of video as well you can shoot up to 4k resolution footage at either 30 or 60 frames per second and last off uh, before I quit for the day and go off for a, a lovely delicious whiskey uh, let's take a look at that 32 megapixel selfie cam and as usual you can get involved with a nice bit of portrait action all that good stuff beauty mode yes please to the max and that my friends I think we can all agree is a thing of beauty. And that right there in a nutshell is Vivo's X51 5G, as I say, coming to the UK on October the 29th for 750 quid. And yeah, the specs aren't quite as beefy as some rivals like the OnePlus 8T, some of Samsung's S20 phones, etc, etc. But hopefully that innovative camera tech will prove to be well worth that extra bit of cash, especially for your low light shots and your more active video. So what do you think of the Vivo X51 5G? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll hopefully bring you a review soon enough, although I've got kind of a cure spot phones going on at the moment it's crazy season and if you haven't already please do put subscribe ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week cheers everyone love you